Srimanta Sankadev R. Mount Enk R. Dev, 1449-1568 Assamese, Mahapurausa Srimanta Sankaradera translit. Mohapuru Srimanto Zunkorju was a 15th-16th century Assamese polymath, a saint scholar, poet, playwright, social religious reformer and a figure of importance in the cultural and religious history of Assam, India. He is widely credited with building on past cultural relics and devising new forms of music Borgit, theatrical performance Ankhya Nat, Barona, dance Satria, literary language Brahavali. Besides, he has left an extensive literary oeuvre of trans-created scriptures Bhagavata of Sankadev, poetry and theological works written in Sanskrit, Assamese and Brahavali. The Bhagavatic religious movement he started, a Kasarana Dharma and also called Neo-Vaishnavite movement, influenced two medieval kingdoms, Kok and the Ahom kingdoms, and the assembly of devotees he initiated evolved into Satra over time, which continue to be important socio-religious institutions in Assam and to a lesser extent in North Bengal. Sankadev inspired the Bhakti movement in Assam just as Guru Nanak, Ramananda, Namdev, Kabir, Basava and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inspired it elsewhere in the Indian subcontinent. His influence spread even to some kingdoms as the Matic Kingdom founded by Bharat Singha, and consolidated by Sarbanda Singha in the latter 18th century endorsed his teachings, his literary and artistic contributions are living traditions in Assam today. The religion he preached is practiced by a large population, and Satra monasteries that he and his followers established continue to flourish and sustain his legacy. Topic. Biography. After the death of Sankadev, Madhavdev incorporated narrations of his life in prayer services, a practice that was followed by his apostles, and in due course of time a large body of biographical literature arose. These are generally classed in two groups, early those by Daityari Thakur, Busandwija, Ramananda Dwija and Vaikantha Dwija and late Guruvanana by Aniruddha Das, the more than one anonymous Katha Guru Karats, Bardawa Karat, Sankadev Karitra from Barpata, the Saru Svaga Kanda and Bar Svaga Kanda by Sarvavalma. The authorship of the biography credited to Ramkaran Thakur, Daityari Thakur's father, is doubted and it is generally dated to the 17th century and classed with the late biographies. In general, all biographies consider Sankadev as an incarnation of Vishnu, including that by Daityari Thakur, the earliest. The late biographies differ from the early group on the count that they ascribe supernatural feats to Sankadev, and describe miraculous events, and there is a tendency to read some events of the Bhagavata into his life. The biographies are full of contradictions, even though the earlier ones are considered more accurate, not all they claim are true. Daityari Thakur's biography, the earliest one, claims Sankadev met with Chaitanya, which is now not accepted to be true. <laughs> Early life, Alipuhuri and Bordawa Sankadev, then named Sankaravara, was born into the Shiromani chief Baro Buyan's family at Alipuhuri near Bordawa in present-day Nagaon district in C1449. Though some authors have expressed doubt that Sankadev could have lived that long, considering that he was of robust health 1449 is generally accepted. The Baro Buyans were independent landlords in Assam, and Sankadev belonged to the Kayastha Hindu caste. His family members, including parents Kasumvar Buyan and Satchizandya Devi, were Saktas. Sankadev lost his father to smallpox when he was about seven years old, and his mother died either soon after his birth, or soon after his father's death, and he was raised by his grandmother Kasuti. He began attending Mahendra Kandali's Tol or Chatrasal school at the age of 12 and soon wrote his first verses Karatala Kamala. The complete poem was written before he was taught the vowels except, of course, the first one, and is often cited as an example of the early flowering of his poetic genius. He stayed at the toll during his teens, and studied grammar and Indian scriptures. He practiced yoga which is gave up later and was physically very able, and according to legend, he could swim across the Brahmaputra while it was in spate. It is generally believed that he wrote his first work, Harish Chandra Upakyan, while at the toll. Mahendra Kandli changed his name to Sankdardev while he was at school. Buyan Sharomaniship 
Sankadev soon mastered the major scriptures of Sanatana Dharma and thereafter left the toll in his late teens C1465 to attend to his responsibilities as the Shiromani Buyan. He came to be known as the Dekagiri among his subjects and admirers. As Alipuhuri had become crowded, he moved his household from Alipuhuri to Bordawa. He married his first wife Suryavati when he was in his early twenties and a daughter, Manu, was born in about three years, but his wife died about nine months later. Topic. First pilgrimage It is possible that the death of his wife increased his already existing spiritual inclination and he left for a twelve-year-long pilgrimage, sometime after his daughter was married to Hari, a Buyan scion. He handed over the maintenance of his household to his son-in-law Hari, the Buyan Shiromaniship to his granduncles Jayanta and Madhav, and began his journey in 1481. He was accompanied by 17 others including his friend and associate Ramaram and his teacher Mahendra Kandali. At this point of time, he was 32. The pilgrimage took him to Puri, Mathura, Dwaraka, Vrindavan, Gaya, Ramaswaram, Ayodhya, Sitakunda and almost all the other major seats of the Vaishnavite religion in India. He seemed to have spent many years at Jagannath Kshetra at Puri, where he read and explained the Brahma Purana to the priests and lay people. At Badrikashram in 1488, he composed his first Borgit, Mana Meri Ram Karanahi Lagu, in Brahavali. According to Katha Gurucharit, the first Borgit was, Rama Meri Ridaya Pankajay Bays, and he composed it in 1481 at the very outset of the pilgrimage at a place called Romari. He returned home to Alipuhuri after 12 years, his family had moved back from Bordawa in his absence. During his pilgrimage, he became the part of a pan-Indian Bhakti movement and helped it blossom. <laughs> Shiromaniship refusal On his return from his pilgrimage C1493, Sankadev refused to take back the Shiromaniship, though on the insistence of his elders, he took responsibility of a hundred families Gamastha, but he soon handed over the responsibility to his son-in-law Hari. On his grandmother's insistence, he married Kalindi at the age of 54. Finally, he moved back to Bordawa and constructed a temple Devagriha, in C1498, possibly a thatched house, built on the original site of his father's house where he could meet with people, discuss religious matters and hold prayers, and preach. He wrote Bhakti Pradipa and Rukmini Harana. Soon after, he received a copy of the Bhagavata Purana from Jagadisa Mishra of Mithila, with Sridhara Swami's monistic commentary. Bhavatha Dipika. Mishra recited and explained the entire Bhagavata in the presence of Sankadev and this event is considered momentous in the development of Akasarana. Datyari, an early biographer of Sankadev writes, Sankadev listened with rapt attention to the exposition by Jagadish Mishra and realized that the Bhagavata was a scripture without parallel, a scripture that determined Krishna as the only God, Nam as the real Dharma, and Akantika Sarana and Sat Sangha as the indispensable elements of the faith. He also began composing the Kirtana Gosha. Topic. Sina Yatra After his exposure to the detailed Bhagavata Purana and Sridhara Swami's commentary Bhavatha Dipika, Sankadev produced a dance drama called Sina Yatra, for which he painted the Sapta Vaikantha seven heavens, guided the making of musical instruments and played the instruments himself. According to other biographers, Sankadev produced Mahanata in the presence of Jagdish Mishra in the temple he had constructed at Alipuhuri. According to Neog, this was the point when Sankadev decided to preach a new religion. Some of the first to be initiated into this religion was the wife of Jayanta Dalai, a leper named Hari Ram, later Chulasiram, Ramaram his associate and Mahendra Kandali, his toll teacher. The 13 years at Alipuhuri was the period during which he reflected deeply on Vaishnavism and on the form that would best suit the spiritual and ethical needs of the people. Ananta Kandali, a profound scholar of Sanskrit, became his disciple during this time. He translated the later part of Canto X of the Bhagavata Purana after consulting Sankadev. From Alipuhuri Sankadev moved back to Bordaur in 1509 and built a Thaan. Some authors claim that this then had all the major features of a satra central kirtungha, kari hati etc., whereas many others assert that these features did not exist during Sankadev's time. 
This then was abandoned and more than a hundred years later in the middle of the 17th century, Sankadev's granddaughter-in-law, Kanaklata, established it again. Topic. Literary works in the Baro Buyan territories Non Bhagavata group Harishgandra Upakhyana Bhakti Pradip Kirtan Gosa Uresavanana Non Bhagavata mixed with Bhagavata elements, not influenced by Sridhara Swami Rukmini Harana Kavyar Lyrics Borgit Bhagavata tales, not from Book X Ajamilo Pakyan, Book Vi, Amrta Manthan, Book 8, Kirtan Gosa, Ajamilo Pakyan, Pralada Karitra, Harmahana, Sections E Vi. Topic Ahom Kingdom. Topic Gangmao. Viswasinga, began his activities to remove the Buyans from power in the western part of the Brahmaputra Valley in 1509. Furthermore, the Buyans in the Bordaur area picked up a quarrel with their Kachari neighbors, and when attacked Sankadev advised the Buyans to move, which brought to an end the independence of this group of Buyans. Sankadev and his associates first crossed the Brahmaputra River in 1516-17 and settled first at Singari and finally at Ruta, and when Viswasinga advanced towards Ruta, Sankadev moved to Gangmao in the Ahom kingdom. At Gangmao they stayed for five years where Sankadev's eldest son Ramananda was born. At Gangmao, he wrote the drama Patniprasad. In fact he lived alone at a place named Gajalasuti out of dissatisfaction with some relative. He penned the play there. Topic. Duwahat While at Gangmao, the Kok King Viswasinga attacked the Ahams. The Buyans fought for the Ahams and the Kok King was defeated. Due to the unsettled situation at Gangmao Sankadev next moved to Duwahat, near Ahatguri in present-day Majuli, washed away by the Brahmaputra in 1913. The Buyans were settled here by the Ahams with land and estate. Hari, Sankadev's son in law, became a Saikya, and his cousin Jagatananda, grandson of Jayanta, received a title. Ramarai. At Duwahat, he met his spiritual successor Madhavdev. Madhavdev, a Sakta, got into a religious altercation with his brother in law Ramadas, who had recently converted to Vaishnavism. Ramadas took him to Sankadev, who, after a long debate, convinced him of the power and the efficacy of a Kasarana. The acquisition of Madhavdev, with his talent in poetry, singing and dedication to his newfound religion and guru, was a significant event in the Akasarana history. At Duwahat he managed to attract a wider attention and popularity and he initiated many others into his religion. The popularity of Akasarana and the conversion of people alarmed the priestly Brahmins, who reacted with anger and hostility. Sankadev tried to defuse their hostility by meeting with them at the house of his relative Buddha Khan and asking his Brahmin antagonists to install a wooden idol of Jagannath, called Madan Mohan, at his religious seat. Sankadev left this idol hanging on a tree when he took flight from Duwahat, and it was rescued years later by Vamshigapaldev and installed at Dabarapa Satra. The Brahmins finally complained to the Ahom king, Suhangmung (1497–1539), who summoned Sankadev to his court for a debate with them. Sankadev was able to convince the king that he was not a religious rebel and a threat to the social order, and the charges against him were dropped. The hostility, nevertheless, continued. Topic. Flight from Duwahat Though the positions of the Buyans in the Ahom kingdom began comfortably, with Sankadev's son-in-law, Hari, becoming a paik officer and Ramrai, his cousin, becoming a royal official, the relationship gradually deteriorated. After the death of Viswazinga, who was inimical to the Buyans, and the rise of Naranarian 1540, the Kok Buyan relationship improved somewhat. Sometime in the 1540s during the reign of Suklanmung 1539-1552, a royal officer visited the region for an elephant capturing expedition. Hari did not make himself available and furthermore, an elephant escaped through a barrier managed by the Buyans. The officer took grave offence in this dereliction of duty and arrested Hari as well as Madhavdev. At Gargaon, Hari was executed and Madhavdev interned for about a year. 
According to Datiari, taking advantage of the Kok advance against the Ahams 1546 Sankadev and his followers escaped from the Ahom kingdom as they fell behind the vanguard of the Kok army setting up their garrison in Narayanpur further to the east. Topic. Literary works in the Ahom kingdom Arguments against those antagonistic to Bhakti Kirtan Gosa Pasanda Mardana, Namaparada Vipra Patni Prasad Ankhya Nat Tales from Krishna's Early Life Kirtan Gosa Sisu Leela, Rasa Krida, Kamsawada, Gopi Udava Samvada, Kujir Vancha Purana, Akrura Vancha Purana Borgeets Topic. Kok Kingdom Topic. Sunpura Sankadev and his followers reached Kapalabari in Kok Kingdom in later part of 1540 and put up there. But the water was very alkaline there. Several members including Madhavdev's mother Manorama died there. So after staying for some time at Kapalabari, Sankadev and his group moved to Sunpura in 1541. At Sunpura Sankadev initiated Bhavananda, a rich trader who had extensive business interest in the Garo and Bhutan hills besides Kamarupa. The trader, Narayana Das, settled at Janiya near Barpata and took to agriculture. A man of the world otherwise, he soon flourished and became a provider to Sankadev and his devotees. He came to be known popularly as Takurata. Topic. Patbosi After a great deal of moving, Sankadev settled at Patbosi near Barpata in the Kok Kingdom and constructed a Kirtungha house of prayer. Some of the people he initiated here are Chakrapani Dwija and Sarvavorm Bhattacharya, Brahmins, Govinda, Agaro, Jairam, Abhutya, Madari, Ajainsha, Jatiram, an ascetic, and Mirari, a Kok. Damodardev, a Brahmin, was initiated by Sankadev. Damodardev was entrusted by Sankadev to initiate Brahman disciples. A satra was also constructed for him at Patborsi itself. Later Damodardev became the founder of the Brahma Sanghati sect of Sankadev's religion. Among Sankadev's literary works, he completed his rendering of the Bhagavata Purana and wrote other independent works. He continued composing the Kirtan Gosha, further translated the first canto of the Ramayana and instructed Madhavdev to translate the last canto Uttarakanda, portions that were left undone by the 14th century poet Madhav Kandali. He wrote four plays, Rukmini Harana, Parajata Harana, Kelagopala and Kaladamana. Another play written at Patborsi, Kanzavada, is lost. At Patborsi, he had lent his bhajits numbering around 240 to Kamala Gayan. But unfortunately, Gayan's house was gutted and most of the Borgites were lost. Since that incident Sankadev stopped composing Bargeets. Of the 240, 34 remain today. Topic. Second pilgrimage Sankadev once again left for a pilgrimage in 1550 with a large party of 117 disciples that included Madhavdev, Ramrai, Ramaram, Thakur Atta and others. Thakur Atta had to return after just one day's journey. Madhavdev had to take entire responsibility of logistics. He on the request of Sankadev's wife Kalindi urged him to return from Puri and not proceed to Vrindavana. Sankadev and the group returned to Patborsi within six months in 1551. Topic. Kok capital and Beladanga On receiving repeated complaints that Sankadev was corrupting the minds of the people by spreading a new religion Nara Narayan, the Kok king, ordered Sankadev's arrest, and Sankadev went into hiding. Chilarai, the general of the Kok army, half-brother of the king and married to Kamalapriya the daughter of Sankadev's cousin Ramarai, then convinced the king to give Sankadev a hearing instead, for the audience with Nara Narayan. As he moved up the steps to the court, Sankadev sang his Sanskrit Totaka hymn, composed extempore, to Lord Krishna Madhu Danava Dharana Deva Varam. And as he sat down, he sang a Borgit, Narayana Kare Bhakati Karu Tera, playing on the name of the king. At the debate with the court pundits that followed, Sankadev was able to refute all allegations against him. 
the king declared him free and furthermore honoured him with a seat close to the throne. Sankadev began to attend Naranarayana's court regularly, and received the freedom to propagate his teachings. Chilarai was instrumental in keeping Sankadev safe and supporting his work. Many of Sankadev's literary and dramatic works were completed in his domain with his patronage and protection. Sankadev acknowledged his appreciation in his play Ram Vijaya. Sankadev shuttled between Kochbihar the capital and Patborsi his seat. He was often hosted by Chilarai, and on his request agreed to have the images of the childhood days of Krishna at Vrindavan woven on cloth. He engaged the weavers of Tantakuchi, near Barpata, to weave a 40-yard-long tapestry panel. Sankaradeva provided the designs to be woven, chose the various colors of thread to be used, and supervised the weaving. It took about a year to complete and, deriving its name from its theme, came to be known as the Vrindavani Vastra. It was presented to Chilarai and Naranarayan. A section of this cloth is preserved now in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Chanzai, a Muslim tailor serving the Kok king became a disciple of Sankadev at Kochbihar. When Sankadev returned to Patborsi some time later, Chanzai too came with the Sant. Sankadev frequented the capital for more than 20 years and enjoyed unstinted royal patronage for the first time. Topic. End He made arrangements with Madhavdev and Takur Atta and gave them various instructions at Patborsi and left the place for the last time. He set up his home at Beladonga in Kochbihar. During his stay at Kochbihar, Maharaja Naranarayana expressed his wish to be initiated. Sankadev was reluctant to convert a king and declined to do so. According to one of the biographers Ramcharan Thakur, a painful boil, a Visha Fohara, had appeared in some part of his body and this led to the passing away of the saint. Thus, in 1568, after leading a most eventful life dedicated to enlightening humanity, the Mahapurusha breathed his last, after four months of his last stay at Beladonga at the remarkable age of 120 years. Topic. Literary works in the Kok Kingdom Bhagavata Tales, not from Book X, Bali Chalana, Book 8, Anadi Patana, Book 3, Vimana Purana, Bhagavata Tales from Book X, 11, 13, Kirtan Gosa, Jarasanda Yuda, Kalayavana Bada, Mukakunda Stuti, Sayamanta Haran, Narada Krishna Darsan, Vipra Putra Anayana, Daivakir Putra Anayana, Veda Stuti, Lilamala, Rukminir Prem Kala, Bragu Pariksha, Sri Krishna Vaikantha Prayana, Chaturvimsati Avatar Varnana, Tatpaya, Gunamala, Section I, Renderings of Bhagavata Purana, Bhagavata X, R.D. Bhagavata 11 with material from books I and 3 Bhagavata 12 Bhagavata I Bhagavata 2 Bhagavata IX lost Kurukshetra book X Uttarada Nimi Nava Siddha Samvada from Ramayana Ramayana Uttarakanda lyrics Borgites Totaya Bhatima doctrinal treatise Bhakti Ratnakar Drama Ankhya Nat Kali Dharman Kelly Gopal Rukmini Haran Parajit Haran Ram Vijay Visual Art Vrindavani Vastra – Parts of this work are preserved in London. Akasarana Sankadev used the form of Krishna to preach devotion to a single god Eka Sarana, who can be worshipped solely by uttering his various names Nam. In contrast to other bhakti forms, Eka Sarana follows the Dasya attitude a slave to god. Moreover, unlike the Gaudiya Vaishnavism of Bengal, Radha is not worshipped along with Krishna. In uttering the name of god, Hari, Rama, Narayana and Krishna are most often used. Sankadev's famous debate with Madhavdev, who was a staunch Sakta devotee of Shakti earlier, and Madhavdev's subsequent conversion to Vaishnavism, is often cited as the single most epoch-making event in the history of the Neo-Vaishnavite movement in Assam. Madhavdev, an equally multi-talented person, became his most celebrated disciple. Srimanta Sankadev started a system of initiation sarana into his religion. 
He caused a huge social revolution by fighting against anti-social elements like casteism prevailing at that time. He initiated people of all castes and religions, including Muslims. After initiation, the devotee is expected to adhere to the religious tenets of Eka Sarana. Though he himself married twice, had children and led the life of a householder, his disciple Madhavdev did not. Some of his followers today follow celibate life in the Vaishnavite monasteries, the Satra. The people who practice his religion are called variously as Mahapurusha, Saranya or Sankari. Literary works Sankadev produced a large body of work. Though there were others before him who wrote in the language of the common man, Madhav Kandali who translated the Ramayana into Assamese in the 14th century, his was the first Ramayana to be written in a modern Indian language, Harivara Vipra and Hema Saraswati, it was Sankadev who opened the floodgates and inspired others like Madhavdev to carry on where he left off. His language is lucid, his verse is lilting, and he infused bhakti into everything he wrote. His magnum opus is his Kirtana Gosha, a work so popular that even today it is found in many households in Assam. It contains narrative verses glorifying Krishna meant for community singing. It is a bhakti kava par excellence, written in a lively and simple language. It has stories and songs for amusement for children, it delights the young with true poetic beauty and elderly people find here religious instruction and wisdom. For most of his works, he used the Assamese language of the period so the lay person could read and understand them. But for dramatic effect in his songs and dramas he used Brahavali, medieval Maithili. Other literary works include the rendering of eight books of the Bhagavata Purana including the Adi Dasama Book X, Harishchandra Upakhyana his first work, Bhakti Pradip, the Nimi Navasiddha Samvada conversation between King Nimi and the Nine Siddhas, Bhakti Ratnakara Sanskrit verses, mostly from the Bhagavata, compiled into a book, Anadi Patana having as its theme the creation of the universe and allied cosmological matters, Gunamala and many plays like Rukmini Haran, Patni Prasad, Keli Gopal, Kurukshetra Yatra and Srirama V. Vijaya. There was thus a flowering of great Bhakti literature during his long life of 120 years. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Poetic works, caviar. Kirtana Gosha, Haris Chandra Upakhyana, Rukmini Harana, Ajamilopakhyana, Bali Chalana, Kurukshetra Yatra. Gopi Udava Samvada, Amrta Manthana, Krishna Priyana Pandava Niriyana, Kamajaya Bhakti theory Bhakati Pradipa, Anadipatana, Nimi Navasiddha Samvada, Bhakti Ratnakara in Sanskrit, Gunamala Topic transliteration Bhagavata Book V, 8, I, 2, 7, X, 11, 12, I, X, X, partial, 11, partial, and 12 Ramayana Uttarakanda, supplemental to Madhav Kandali's Saptakanda Ramayana His translation of the Bhagavata is actually a transcreation, because he translates not just the words but the idiom and the physiognomy too. He has adapted the original text to the local land and people and most importantly for the purpose of Bhakti. Portions of the original were left out or elaborated where appropriate. For example, he suppressed the portions that revile the lowest castes of Sudra and Kaivatas, and extols them elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Drama Ankhya Nat Sina Yatra lost. Patni Prasada Janma Jatra lost. Kangsa Bada lost. Parijata Harana, Kali Damana, Rukmini Harana, Keli Gopala, Sri Rama Vijaya. Sankadev was the fountainhead of the Ankhya Nat, a form of one act play. His Sina Yatra is regarded as one of the first open air theatrical performances in the world. Sina Yatra was probably a dance drama, and no text of that show is available today. Innovations like the presence of a sutradhara narrator on the stage, use of masks etc., were used later in the plays of Bertolt Brecht and other eminent playwrights. 
These cultural traditions still form an integral part of the heritage of the Assamese people. Topic: <laughs> Songs. Borgit composed 240, but only 34 exist now. Bartima Deva Bartima, panegyrics to God. Nart Bartima, for use in dramas. Raja Bhatima, panegyrics to King Nara Narayanthi Borgites, literally, great songs, are devotional songs, set to music and sung in various raga styles. These styles are slightly different from either the Hindustani or the Carnatic styles. The songs themselves are written in the Brahavali language. Topic: <laughs> Dance. Satriya dance, that Sankadev first conceived and developed and which was later preserved for centuries by the Satra, is now among the classical dance forms of India. Although certain devout Sankarite calls this form as Sankari dance. Topic. Visual art Sapta Vaikantha, part of the Sina Yatra production, does not exist today. Vrindavani Vastra – Parts of this work are preserved in London. The famous Vrindavani Vastra – The Cloth of Vrindavan – A 120 by 60 cubits tapestry depicted the lilas of Lord Krishna at Vrindavan through richly woven and embroidered designs on silk. A specimen, believed to be a part of this work, is at the Association pour la Etude et la Documentation des Textiles d'Assis Collection at Paris INV, number 3222. The Vastra, commissioned by Kok King Naranarayana, was woven by twelve master weavers in Barpata under the supervision of Sankadev over a period of six months and completed towards the end of 1554. This textile art depicted the life and deeds of Lord Krishna, who is worshipped in Eka Sarana Nama Dharma. The cloth was housed in the royal court of Kochbihar after the saint presented it to the king, but it disappeared at some point. It is believed that parts of this cloth made its way to Tibet and from there to its present place equals equals notes